Since 9-11, the federal government has spent more than $300 million helping Wisconsin prepare for terrorist attacks and natural disasters. But Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson finds that one of the state's top priorities has yet to be fulfilled. Tonight, see what you've been getting for the money and why local officials say a recent decision in Washington could leave Milwaukee vulnerable to a future attack. <laughs> The 9-11 terrorist attacks prompted a massive federal spending effort to beef up local police and fire departments across the country. But 10 years later... With the economy the way it is, that money's starting to dry up. A study by the Wisconsin Center for Investigative Journalism finds Wisconsin's share of Homeland Security funds is dwindling. I think that sense of urgency that we had is starting to wane. The biggest waves came in 2003 and 2004. At a local level, we were really being hurried or pushed to get the money out there. Back then, Kevin Williams was the director of emergency management in Walworth County, which put more than $200,000 into what was deemed a WMD response vehicle. It's now the county's crime scene truck. Basically, the filter just screws right on. The county also spent $65,000 on 500 gas masks and 1,000 gas mask filters. Uh, it was decided that every police car in Walworth County would receive uh, a case with two gas masks in it. They spent another 65 grand for chemical suits and decontamination kits. Oh, we have not had the misfortune of yet to use it, but we do have it in place. We do train with it, so in the case of an event, we wouldn't be prepared. Most of the gas mask kits are still sitting in the trunks of patrol cars, unused. The money has been spent. The equipment is here. It is ready to go, and if there's a need. Yeah, they'll have it. But the filters have a limited shelf life. They expire in 2013. And when they do, Williams says, each department will have to decide for itself if it's worth the money to buy new ones. If it is going to be a question that we're going to have to uh, answer at some point in time. Williams says the gas masks were a good call, but they highlight a difficult choice emergency managers had to make. Buy stuff for a terrorist attack that may never come or buy stuff you can use every day. Do we have anything that's sitting on the shelves that really isn't used? And I, I would say the answer is no. Instead of gas masks, Ozaki County spent $30,000 on metal detectors, one for every police department in the county. But a Fox 6 investigation in 2005 found that none of the metal detectors was being used at large public gatherings that could be the target of terrorist attacks, as the application stated. There it is. In fact, one of them wasn't being used at all. We really never did have to set it up in that the Village Board of Trustees here did not feel they wanted people screened through metal detectors as they entered the Thienesville Village Hall to go to a board meeting. After our story, Thienesville Police Chief Richard Preston says he shipped his metal detector over to the County Justice Center, where it's still being used today for courthouse security not Homeland Security. I think the priorities have been more focused as the uh, Homeland Security grant programs have uh, matured, let's call it. Mark Owen is now the emergency manager in Ozaukee County, which has recently been focused on improving radio communications among first responders. A major problem in New York on 9-11. I think it's getting much better. Um, I don't know if it's, it's, it's not as far as it needs to go, but it's getting very close. John Message is the county's communications leader. It's his job to make sure different agencies within the county can talk to each other during a major event. In a recent test exercise, it worked. But beyond the county's borders... There's still a lot of disparity out there. Since 2003, Wisconsin has spent $79 million to improve radio interoperability. But an audit released last year declared that a top priority remains unmet. The development of a statewide communication system known as WISCOM. Think of it as a, as a statewide backbone. According to Tammy Jackson with the Office of Justice Assistance, WISCOM is comprised of 80 radio towers and repeaters scattered across the state. It will eventually allow a police officer in, say, Milwaukee to instantly communicate with a firefighter in Eau Claire. But a decade after 9-11, the system has yet to go online. Um, we're still conducting the testing, but we expect it to be complete in November. Even then, most police and fire departments in the state won't be able to use it. I'm not so sure that we're close to that at this point. In Walworth County, fewer than 10% of the public safety radios currently in service are compatible with WISCOM. In Ozaukee County, almost none of them are. And now a major funding source for upgrading equipment 
has disappeared. It was one of the avenues that we hope to explore. Earlier this year, the Department of Homeland Security scaled back the so-called Urban Area Security Initiative, a special pot of money for big cities. It's a huge concern. Uh, I think it's short-sighted. Milwaukee was among the mid-sized cities dropped from the program, a loss of more than $4 million a year. You know what I heard from Janet Napolitano when she made that decision? That came out of Homeland Security. What I heard was, this isn't that important anymore. That's what I heard. Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark is concerned. We're still a target. And he's not alone. With everything being focused on the major metropolitan areas, we could be looked at as a soft underbelly. In other words, 10 years and $300 million after 9-11, we may be better off. But those who protect us say we're still vulnerable. We're becoming a little lax in these areas here just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean that it can't, doesn't mean that it won't. According to state auditors, the cost to get local police and fire departments up to speed with radios that will work with the WISCOM system could pose challenges. Those costs are currently unknown. But as an example, in Ozaukee County, they are currently testing a radio that meets federal standards that would work with the WISCOM system, and a single device costs $5,000. There are 2,500 radios in Ozaukee County. Do the math. That's $12.5 million dollars in Ozaukee County alone. Brian Polson, Fox 6 Investigators. Thank you, Brian.